upon by the returning Emily Anderson. Last week's final win over Western Pride after an eventful round six. Two goals and a sent off after two yellow cards. So I don't know if that's a football equivalent of the full house. Two goals, two yellow cards in the red, but it's pretty close to either way. Beach started well, only three minutes in. Here go Broadbeach trying to fashion the attack, but it was late. Like all the way back to the big part of it was Leo Kahn. Not members of the light blue jersey, not the easiest to read on the screen, but do our best. Free header, Kalitha Kramer. Almost with a chance to score a second goal. 
see her there just hovering around the edge of the six yard box and with enough space. Take quickly as City's pressure from the front and Wizzo just a bit too much heat on that pass as Nathan is ready to turn and fire. Tessa Buzo. Yes. Japanese goalkeeper Watanabe. Yes. Goalkeeping stops at Broadbeach. So we've got on the bench Dakota Withrod, who started the first two games. With the 23 side. Second part of a double header as Watanabe had to lunge to get that one away. Goes that one is weird by Rea. Through the box and Watanabe. Early, and there was for a penalty, but do it. You have a referee. Possession, one back by Keane. Here's Lathan holding it up and turning Raya. Well, and just got support out wide. Watanabe's off the line and the shot taken on and just tipped over. Oh, the offside flag has gone up. So it wouldn't have counted anyway, but Watanabe was not to know. As Lathan looks to turn provider in this instance. Highly sure City are completely in favour of that decision, but that's what was called and that's what we'll be playing. Ten minutes into this round eight clash from FQPL1. Mr. Doyle has dropped back into the central defensive role after playing in midfield last week against Pride. Reynolds skipping. Pass a challenge and unable to get the clean pass off under pressure from Buzo. And the pressure relieving free kick for City as Keen is a judge to have infringed upon her opponent. Strong Keen winning the ball back, trying to play it through for Anderson. There you go, Broadbeach there, not shying away from the Brisbane City Challenge this evening. Cross goes in again towards the spot, almost controlled then on the follow-up, blocked at the edge of the six-yard box by one of the defenders, saving Sunderland, although I feel like if that ball made it through, she would have been able to deal with that. Reynolds loses out in the two on one situation. Leighton putting the pressure on. Flyer 
Savage just can't get the clean pass she was looking for. And in the midfield was Jess Dillon, another new addition to the City family this year. And now the chance could be on and down goes. Oh, Broadbeach plays, it was Charlson. Those appeals instantly waved away. Let's see if we can catch it. There's a bit of pressure being put on as, as Kramer. Involved now. The ball is back in play. Goes looking for the head of Anderson. She had straight into an offside position. Stokes and 15, but she's unable to regather possession and a chance for Hicks. Doesn't quite have the pace to see off Cashman. Target from Melik. Yeah. Now gone, still waiting for that first breakthrough. women's football round so all of our feature matches this week on FQTV are coming from the women's competitions there you go, City on the attack once again Cashman in the run down the right flank into Broad Beach half going deeper and deeper. Goes in for support. And she would have been able to play it in were it not for the determined defending of Talia Reynolds. You can see at the bottom of the screen, passionate as ever, Chris Soto, the coach. Decide to. Win the, oh, the shot could be on here and it's escaped the fingertips of Watanabe. And we've got the opening goal of the game. It is Mackenzie Stokes on her season debut. And City strike first on the quarter hour mark. And just too much space for Mackenzie Stokes in the box. Actually, I beg your pardon. I'm pretty convinced that was Mackenzie Stokes with the goal. Credit her for the time being. I'll have to confirm with the ground announcer. Oh, what an update. And the pressure by Fryer. City could be in again. Latham in support, but just not enough on the pass from Fryer. And it, well, Latham had been able to get to the ball, but Fryer straight into an offside position. Lady Fryer, sister Sean playing for the Raw this year. Both of them make their way back from ACL injuries. In quick succession. She was saying just for the Raw how useful it was having her sister there for support. Over the recovery process. Yeah. 
Cashman with room to run again. Well marshalled by Sky Newman, making just a third appearance of the season. The ball over the top, Buzo in acres of space, but unfortunately. That ball also landed in acres of space. Buzo's cross is calmly claimed by Watanabe. Lunch with, actually could for that shot, but unable to regather it. Reynolds nodding it forward, trying to pick out Hicks. And Buzo has space, steps inside Doyle, looks to tee up Latham, but Reynolds is not there for the pass. holding midfield spot, Cashman she tries to go through the legs of Reynolds, gets the ball back and well, a whole lot of doubt about that one, Latham offside, Lord Beach just catch the City attacker out once again. First game Latham well, announced her intentions for the season, hat-trick in 32 minutes, 46, 60 and 78. Carlson. Buzo. Oh, what an arm, eh? Saw that coming from a mile away and was a mile out of her goal as she tried to intercept that one and managed to beat the striker to it. Numbers forward, but they would be caught out on the break if they're not careful. Ashman. Look at the pass to Buzo, and here you go, Broadbeach, looking for a quick strike. And Keane quite on the same page as her teammate. pressure a risky challenge is oh, see what they were trying to do there Hicks just caught on the heels is a goal in the Bay Derby as well Nothing much in that just a desperation lunge from Newman
Sunderland just takes it quickly for Leah Kana. Drawn at the back and just getting it away was Newman and Broadbeach. They're not afraid to put a bit of pressure on this city back line, which has had a few changes. Three made last night. A heavily rotated team from their midweek Kappa Women's Super Cup victory as Charleston plays it over the sideline. Coming back for an offside infringement. I suppose that's about as close to offside as you can get while still being on the pitch. inside, it out for Kramer, he slices it out wide into the advertising boards on the far side. We're at Imperial Corp Stadium. If you're ever not sure, just look above the halfway line. New name for the new market home of Brisbane City. Cashman asks for support in the middle and can only play a deflected cross into the welcoming arms of Watanabe. free kick with no advantage accumulating. It's just a slightly off target pass and the goalkeeper, not the goal scorer, I beg your pardon, Stokes. Going to reel that ball in, unable to do so. across looking for Buzo. Instead it was a curling effort and that was closer than it first looked on uh, the live shot. Let's check out the replay and see what that one shows. Doyle's clearance. Right back to sender and oh, you can see off the shadow of the goalpost that was enough to Broadbeach a little bit nervous about going two behind before half time. City attacker very closely and oh, off the bar and so close to being there for the tap in for Buzo. 
the City almost able to double their advantage. The curling effort. Possibly take a touch on the way through and Watanabe might have also been able to get a fingertip on that one just to make sure City couldn't add to their lead. It's keen on the turn, can only play it off Dylan. Everett into play now. Here's Hicks into the box off the outside of the boot, and it's in for an own goal of Will Leo Kana. And Broadbeach have leveled the score with a lightning quick counter attack. And it was all set up. Oh, great work by Gemma Hicks, who scored in the first match between these sides. And the visitors, well, they'll be very happy with the last couple of minutes have gone. They survive a scare at the other at one end, then go all the way down the other. And, well, that could be the final contribution for Hicks. As she is down now, requiring a bit of treatment on that right leg. Blow this would be for Broadbeach coming off the high of finding an equaliser. Just the fourth goal Brisbane City have conceded all season. Of course, one of the three prior to tonight did come back in round one. Back underway, the City. Hopefully, have seen that as a wake-up call with Kramer, the ex Roar and Wellington player. Set last season with Capalaba. The shot from range is taken by Watanabe. is possessed and now Broadbeach well they've got the bit between their teeth now as Charlson storms down that far sideline and Anderson thought she had support behind her for the time being the visitors they might be playing with 10 as Hicks continues to receive treatment on the Broadbeach bench Stokes. Charleston with Anderson making the run through the middle, just couldn't pick out the centre forward. Yeah. A bit of a boil over happening in the men's competition as well. Rochdale 2 0 up over Gold Coast. Field by Keane gives Will Beach a chance to spread it out to the far sideline. Charlson back in. So again, they're trying to get the ball to Anderson, but they haven't quite got their radars synced up yet. And the 10 player Broad Beach with Gemma Hicks. Injured after getting the assist for 
Will it Lee Kane's goal? And now Watanabe might be caught off her line, but to scramble back before Latham can size things up. Sending it out for Thompson with plenty of players to aim for, including Fryer. Can't get the shot away. Latham on the follow up. Another great save from Watanabe to deny the Golden Boot leader in the FQPL competition. As well as heading up the corner, the replay. Thompson's ball is not dealt with, and I think that was an intentional tee up from Laney Fryer, but produced a well play shot and an even better save from Atsuko Watanabe. And there you see Hicks making her way back on. Hopefully, has been able to shake off whatever was ailing her. It's a looping delivery there, and it's palmed away on the follow up. Fryer can't get it through the List of bodies and off the shot, denied Cashman. Another great save from Watanabe. The keeper just palmed that one away. It was blocked. I think it might have been Hicks with the intervention and Cashman. I thought she might have been able to get her first goal of the season. Corner taken short, but Broadbeach went back quickly. And now they'll look to... Spring a counter attack, but they're not able to by the city last defender, the Cashman. Look for Latham, who's straight out to this right flank, and she's able to keep that one in. In space to just loft it for Fryer at the back post. Winds up with Thompson. In goes Kramer. It's a shot away and into the side netting. So Brisbane City. They're searching for the go-ahead goal. This is slightly altered. Broad Beach lineup. There are a couple of force changes for Chris Soto to deal with. Nadine Keast in attack, and Joy Forsyth out with injury. And defender Serena Smith will miss today due to work commitments. However, the 11 on the park for Broad Beach are holding firm, including Freya, who like that challenge. And now the chance could be on here. It's Anderson. She's through Sunderland, stays on her line, but. Lee Anderson waits for support and it arrived eventually, but result in much. It's Malik dispossessed and now let's see Stokes trying to slide that one through for Latham, but was just asking a little bit much of the centre forward. Kana knocks that one down for Kramer. Now back for Newman. Gizzo plays that one. Inside Stokes. Actually finding Fryer. About not having a go herself, but her pass is cut out by Melick. Straight through the legs, and this could be on now from a tight angle. City restore their lead. A beautiful solo run and goal. And of course, it is Steph Latham with her 17th of the season. Sold the dummy. Waited for Watanabe to commit to the low save. Huge goal, seven minutes before half time, because that does ensure we won't have a repeat of round one where the sides went into the intermission. The level at one apiece, and City got the advantage, and they'd love to do something with it here. However, they're on the defensive now. 
Seth Latham, 17 goals this season. into context now with City cutting out that attack. So heading into this weekend, Steph Latham, 16 goals scored on her own in the FQPL competition. And he's more than four other teams in this division. Rubina have 13, Logan have 12, Pride have 6, and Morton Bay have 10. This is all prior to round 8 taking place. And she is level with Virginia on her own. Just an absolutely ridiculous season for Steph Latham. And well, let's continue tonight. It's, she's added another one to her tally. And I think can't count her out. Getting number 18 as she looks to be on. But Buzo has straight offside as we could hear the Broad Beach bench who are right in line with that one. Beach. I'm sure all things considered. They won't be feeling too bad about themselves as we enter the final six minutes of the first half. They'll be trailing, but it's by a solitary goal, and they have had more than their share of chances. Dylan. Newman trying to thread the needle for Cashman, but unable to do so. Challenge of Latham. Beach looking to play their way out. It's Melik. She forces Riemann all the way back. On the turn, Hicks. Beautiful move to get by Cashman, and now she's looking to put on the afterburners. The left footed ball into the midsection of Newman and behind it goes for a corner and Hicks. She's battling, but she's still going. the corner as Sunderland punches it away confidently. Hicks is dispossessed. Stokes. She's continued her run, gets the ball back from Latham, and it's Mackenzie Stokes, but just unable to escape Nisa Doyle. I think pardon, that wasn't Nisa Doyle. That's Kristen Layton. Loose 
pass by City. Could be pounced on by Broadbeach as well, they give possession straight back with a bit of a wasteful, hopeful ball forward. However, that was quite the pass that Sky Newman would have been hoping for. She plays it behind Cashman and it goes for a throw. And Anderson dropping very deep to try and get involved, but gives the ball to Latham. Buzo, Latham over the top. Fryer offside, doesn't get involved. She did in the end, but perhaps decided to let play continue for the time being. Of course, the other reason why you could be seeing Gemma Hicks continuing to tough it out after picking up an injury just before the half-hour mark. It is a very, very short bench for Broadbeach. Only two outfield players on it. They have no option but to continue for the time being. Latham... Waiting in the middle for the cross from Thompson. Latham digs the ball out. Can she get the shot away? She can't. She'll instead get it to Stokes. Off the crossbar. Second time this half. City have rattled the woodwork. But it's still alive. Thompson with the curling ball in. Cleared away by Layton. On the follow-up. Raya just anywhere will do. As Anderson tries to get it to Charlson. And Sunderland off her line. Launches it. Ernie Sunderland, one of two from that family at Brisbane City. Sister Lane not involved today. She's played six games. Scored. Well, scored last week, actually, I beg your pardon. In the 5 0 win over Morton Bay. However, it's fair to say City. Have an enviable amount of depth in the FQPL competition as another work by Riemann to play that one off. It's Thompson for the throw in. First half stoppage time. Not sure we'll have too many minutes added on. Over Broad Beach. Well, they might have fancied one last attack, but instead they'll be on the defensive as Buzo cannot find a way through. Strong work by Reynolds. I'll tell you what, this first 46 plus minutes has flown by. Latham sizes up the pass. Buzo, will she run it down? And that is the end of an eventful first half here at Imperial Corp Stadium. It is Brisbane City 2 1 over Broadbeach United. Goals from Mackenzie Stokes and Steph Latham for the home side, while an own goal from Willow Liu Kanan got the visitors on the board. And we will be back with the second half on FQTV after these messages.
Belton Industries is proud to be the official shelter and grandstands partner of Football Queensland. Felton offers a range of premium aluminium grandstands, from elite portable spectator seating to soccer team shelters for players and coaches. Give your fans the best view of the game with Felton's comfortable spectator seating. With sun-safe shelters or powder-coated in your team colours, whatever your club needs, Felton has a high-quality, low-maintenance seating option to suit. We are the pioneers in Australian-made grandstands and team shelters. Contact Felton today on 1800 834 016 or visit felton.net.au. Go Sports pride themselves on delivering top quality FIFA regulation compliant goals. Each goal is made from durable, high density, thick aluminium and then finished in a white powder coat. To provide quick delivery, Vito Sports stock all goals in this range within their Brisbane distribution warehouse, allowing customers to quote, order and deliver in a matter of days. If you'd like to inquire about the Vito Sports goal range, email us at admin at vitosports.com.
And welcome back to Imperial Corp Stadium for the second half of this FQPL Round 8 commentary. It's Women's Football Week here on FQTV and we've got a football clash from the second division coming up. It is the runaway dynasty or dominant force of Brisbane City chasing an eighth win from eight starts. Leading 2-1 over the challengers today, Broadbeach United. But before we do get on with the second half, we will see the football community stands with Winchell Powers, Isaac Powell, as he goes through another battle with leukemia. And if you did watch the Morton Bay derby earlier today on FQTV, you would have seen Ken Power and Morton Bay standing together as they raise awareness for strength to give and for his search for the donor. Register online at strengthtogive.org.au. Enter the Stand with Isaac appeal code. Enter your details and get a swab kit. You can potentially become a life-saving donor. And say it again, the entire football community stands with Isaac Powell as he prepares for the fight his young life. And we do hope we wish him all the best. And now we... We'll turn our attention back to the action on the pitch. Andy Sunderland just greet some fans in the stands. Just in the foreground, on the very bottom of the shot. It closes the pictures. We do have the players on the pitch, and we've got the referee out there as well. We have some half-time changes. We'll have to wait and see. And cross off the players as we spot them. And actually, we do have one change by the looks of it. Ashley Hummels is on in number nine. But she might be replacing Tessa Buzo on the right wing. City, one goal to the good. They ran away with it in the second half when these sides met back in March at this very same venue. Will it be the same story? Or possibly, maybe, could Broadbeach find a way to be the first team to take anything from Brisbane City in the league or Kappa Women's Super Cup this year? Well, we'll just have to wait and find out. It is City on the attack early. That cross in from Latham is un unable to find Ashley Hobbles with just nine goals from seven games this season. Always one in midfield by Malik and it's it out for Keane. Thompson in acres of space out on this near side as Broad Beach in court with a very narrow defensive shape, but he's throwing for the visitors. Kana back for Sunderland who has to take a touch to control it, gets it back for the former Olympic defender. Leah Kana. Makes the challenge to Ethan Kramer. Stokes sprays it. Way out on that far side as passes are exchanged and the cross is measured. Thompson is free at the back post if the ball can get her, but the low driving delivery. We'll find its intended target. City maintaining possession. Here's Dylan. Thompson fancies a shot from range and it bounces into Watanabe's arms as she had to make a couple of big saves 
in the first half to keep City at bay and was also helped out a little bit by the woodwork at the goal, which is now at the back of Ernie Sunderland. And the foul for the infringement in midfield. with the driving run Latham at the near post and it just evades everybody and it's going to be a goal kick for Broadbeach as we check the replay now looks like that was Fryer who made the run he said in the first half and we'll say it again the white numbers on the light blue jersey not commentator friendly but we'll do our best to make do Broadbeach once again determined to play their way out of pressure. This pass from Watanabe is that's pounced on by Stokes, who scored the opening goal this evening. And to add to a tally with that shot skewed across the face of Watanabe's goal. Pass is pounced on by Thompson, but he was there to regather possession. as a substitute. Oh, Waddingham is another player introduced at half time. David De Silva not afraid to ring the changes. Through able to pick out Hummels as it's off the post again. City must be wondering can they walk under a ladder to get out onto the pitch. That is the third time they've hit the woodwork and had it bounce away. Thanks to the benefit of Broadbeach. And Dylan looks like she has been withdrawn. Doing a quick survey. There we go. It's Broad Beach, beautiful ball through. And it's Hicks and it's 2-2. Two, two. Oh, how about that from Broad Beach? They strike in the opening minutes of the second half and it is Gemma Hicks. Benefiting from a beautiful slide rule pass from Georgia Keane. And City, they've got a challenge on their hands now. And City storming forward in numbers and played behind by Rare. Plays it off the defender for a corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Stokes thought about presenting as an option for the short corner, but watch closely. Instead, it's an in-swing corner, punched away, but only to the top of the box. Stokes taking the first time shot on. It's deflected and just palmed away by Watanabe. However, the offside flag will have gone up against Latham by the looks of it. It's punched away Stokes steaming onto the ball and Latham was interfering with play so it is going to be offside almost loose pass at the back, that was well collected as City pushed forward again. Thompson cuts inside. And blocked by Leighton. Side of the foot clears it away, but only as far as Thompson, who had time to size up the shot, but on the bounce it goes into the arms of Watanabe. Might just have to play it over the sideline. Or it's a curling ball that is regathered by Kramer. City piling the pressure on. Oh, they'll be under pressure as Malik is able to play the ball forward, and Charleston is able to run that one down with Kramer, the nearest player. Waddingham under pressure. She's dispossessed. And it's Anderson out for Charleston who will deliver pretty much from the corner. It falls now. Shot taken on. Deflected. And just blazed wide as it was Georgia Keane who went close after setting up the equaliser. And fancied her chances of scoring the go-ahead goal. No deflection actually. So behind it goes for a goal kick. Broadbeach, to their credit, giving City all they can handle so far. As Kramer escapes one challenge, escapes two, but can't get by Keane. What a monster game she's having, and Keane takes a shot on from range. Not able to find the space above Annie Sunderland's hands and below the crossbar. Kramer. And the defenders sending it out now, Thompson. It's crossed towards the back post, but not enough power on it. Fryer. She'll take the shot on from range and straight out Watanabe. Oh look, if the first ten minutes of the first of the second half are anything to go by, I think we'll be in for a pretty good finish here at Imperial Corp Stadium. It's round eight of the FQPL women's competition Brisbane City Broadbeach United as James Coglin here in the commentary booth nice touch from Waddingham has opened up a bit of space now for Broadbeach Keane skips by the initial challenge from Cashman and is brought down by Waddingham for a shot. Successful shot anyway is that one low to the bottom corner and Sunderland calmly saves that. Not 
Nave. Basically at the front of her 18-yard box there to claim that. Carlson through the middle, but came off second best in that collision with Cashman. Shuffle at halftime from David De Silva. Looks like it might be possibly Zalies and Coots at right back. But more importantly, left back Kramer has come forward. Thompson can't find a way through that wall of Broad Beach jerseys. As Cashman. Well, can confirm Cashman is definitely playing centre back next to Leo Kana, so confirming who that halftime sub was. Right back. Do our best to get it right. Passes well, was onside in that instance, but unable to get by Doyle. for the home side as we've ticked past an hour played at Imperial Corp Stadium. And that ball is definitely not in the circle in the designated area, but good enough, so we'll play on. Flip it in and just goes behind. And so after 15 minutes, we've finally been able to confirm the Brisbane City halftime substitution. So coming on, Molly Waddingham, Zali Eason Coots, and Ashley Hummels in place of Jess Dillon, Tessa Buzzo, and Sky Newman. Oh, we got there eventually. That's the important thing. Quite gone to plan for Brisbane City is considered the only goal of the opening quarter of an hour of the second stanza. And a well worked move that finished with Gemma Hicks leveling proceedings. Cashman under pressure gets back for Sunderland who Wastes no time. Again, Stokes. And a oh, crunching challenge by Kramer. Absolutely flattens Charlson. And well, not a whole lot of argument as Kramer quickly scurries away as far back as she can get. And the referee's line of sight, perhaps. But to avoid any further sanctions. Not that that challenge, in my opinion, would have really warranted something. 
Lofted ball into the box. Underland. Claims that amongst the bodies in the box. He's in Coots. And they play that over the sideline. Substitutions attempting to be made there, but we'll get them now. Substitution for Brisbane City, number three, Jacqueline Cashman, to be replaced by number 16, Lorena Munoz Bravo. There we go, that's nice and straightforward. Lorena Munoz Bravo on. And Cashman off. See what changes that makes. In their structure, but more importantly, we'll worry about what's happening with Thompson as she'll try and play that one to the back post. And while Latham was waiting, and you can see the frustration. She would have had an easy tap in if the delivery could have gotten by Watanabe. A free kick for a collision by the looks of things just inside the Broad Beach half. We might we're just off screen. Looks like we've got a bit of dialogue now between the Broad Beach bench and our referee, Mina Wambugu. And we will play on now as he's in Coots with the Header away. Broad Beach back in possession with Reynolds. Strong work. Almost able to tee up the Broad Beach attackers, but now City is. As they want the ball back, have it down in the Broad Beach half and an attacking throw in. 35 yards from goal. Probably by the time it's taken, it's going to be. I don't know, we'll have the position corrected about 30 yards from goal. There's Fryer with space, exchanging passes with Sunderland, and it could fall. Is this Fryer's moment? It is 3 2 Brisbane City. A beautiful run from Lady Fryer, and the assist from Steph Latham restores Brisbane City's advantage. It was. A bounce that went City's way and one on one with Watanabe. Laney Fryer made no mistake. She scored her fourth goal of the season. And for the third time tonight, City take the lead, and for the third time tonight, Broadbeach will look for an answer. And first response. Took about 14 minutes. The second one, actually 14 minutes of well, not counting the halftime break, of course. 14 minutes to the 29th minute. And then the 37th to the 51st. So, no math whiz, but that'll... I'm just watching very closely around about the 80th, if not sooner. Eventually, over the sideline. It's kept in, he's in Coots, plays it for Latham, who had straight offside, so we'll come back. The free kick. Yeah, 
Waddingham has it for Fryer. She fancy a double or possibly teeing up Latham one on one and just rolled wide Latham. Oh, it was a beautiful build up and the finish just a little bit off target, but City starting to flex their muscles a little bit and good work by Watanabe. Off her line well to close down the angles. Just force that shot from Latham wide as chases number 18 on the season. She's onside, thanks to Doyle by the looks of it, and it is going to be a city corner. The two outfield players at Broad Beach's disposal Louisa Costa and Veronica Pitak Zilka. Kramer just shrugs off the Canadian Melek. Very recent acquisition for Broadbeach. And actually, we will see one of those players brought on. It is Veronica Pitak Zilka. She will have 20 minutes in what is, by my notes, her season debut. Will that bring about for Broad Beach? Yes. Well, you can tell what the assistant referees in the crowd thought of that decision. Let's see if we can catch a quick replay of that one. And from my very far away viewpoint, I'm not entirely sure there was enough there for a free kick, but. Defer once again to the person with the whistle. That's why they're there to make those decisions. Beautiful ball out wide, able to find Hummels. It's lofted and looking for Fryer with the header. She has a brace, and City are up 4 2 with 20 minutes to play. Too much space for Thompson and Fryer just ghosted in between the two defenders. And Fryer now with five goals in five appearances this season and two in the space of four or five minutes. Towards the back post, and Hummels is thinking about trying to get her name on the score sheet this evening. Once again, 
Palm Beach's determination to play their way out of their own end is commendable. As Kramer is putting that experience to good use. Bravo plays that out for Eason Coots. There's Hummels with the, with the six yard box, but the only player in there is Watanabe. Now, with a quarter of an hour to go, how much do Broadbeach have in the tank? They've got a short bench. That one brings it back under control. Petak Zilka unable to corral the ball. Wanningham directing Stokes, but just can't play it to feet. Zilka getting it. Through to Anderson and the substitute gets the return pass. Broad Beach to halve the deficit. Possibly through Keane here as she'll take the shot on, but enough power on that one. Quarter of an hour remaining here at Imperial Corp Stadium. And thus far, the City might be on their way to an eighth straight win but to close out this one. I going to say, Long Beach will not be too discouraged by their performance in this evening's game. And their moments have pushed City, but they find a way to close the gap ahead of their third meeting this season in a couple of months. And that ball played through for Hummels. It's crossed to the back post and so close, Steph Latham almost able to add another one but it's denied by a last ditch header. That was a necessary intervention from, I believe it was Doyle. Thompson looking to put the game to bed. Georgia Thompson, it's 5-2 City. And they'll be on their way to an eighth straight win thanks to Georgia Thompson. Just making no mistake. Substitution as well for 
Broadbeach, Ava Talon coming on for Mackenzie Stokes for City. But also coming on, it looks like that's Dakota Withrod, the reserve goalkeeper, but he's slotting in defence at the moment as only Waddingham has gone down after having a knock in midfield. Let's check the replay. Looks like that's just had the wind knocked out of her, which is never pleasant. break in play as it stands as uh, wanting him a chance to get her breath back but take a look ahead to what's coming for both of these teams and I've just had confirmation from the ground from Broadbeach thank you very much for that it is an outfield appearance for Dakota Withrod 23's captain it looks like that's Worse, possibly for Nottingham getting an arm looked at, which is a really unfortunate sign for the young player, and it's not what you want to see. So it looks like City might be finishing this game with ten, unless reserve goalkeeper Stella Campbell comes out, comes on as an outfield player. Resume play with a drop ball in the middle of the pitch. And it is Broadbeach in possession. Withrod have a run out as Thompson fancy the shot from range. towards another three points. But for the time being, the march was a little bit too advanced and the offside flag has gone up yet again against looks like Latham. Well, I suppose the tension now is a little bit less than it was 15 or so minutes ago. It was Andy Fryer's brace and Thompson's goal have given City a 5-2 advantage. Zilka unable to control that, but she did hold it up just enough to open up an opportunity for a shot from range, and Sunderland makes no mistake with that one. Latham with Watanabe off her line and Steph Latham. Oh, that is special. It's 6 2 to City and they're running away with it in the final quarter of an hour. As Latham just knocked it past and Watanabe off her line. And what a way to score your 18th of the season. 
Oh, beg your pardon, that is Talitha Kramer with the goal. Either way, that was a spectacular strike. And we've got a few positional switches taking place with City by the looks of things as they look to cover for Waddingham. And there is Latham holding the base of midfield as she did at Palabar for so long. City just happy to play the possession game. Thompson, but she's dropped into a left back role for the time being. Daniels Bravo. Yeah, that is Kramer up front. first to him. She's able to play it over the sideline for Rowan for Broadbeach. to the stands. Said it before the score blew out, but I have to give Broad Beach plenty of credit. They held on to about the 78th minute mark, but well, 21st minute actually, where Ryan's second goal just blew this game apart and fresh legs of Brisbane City and the skill as well. We're not separating these sides. strike from range is going to roll harmlessly wide for another goal kick as we tick down the final three and a half minutes of normal time. First challenge, Latham. Broad Beach, can they find a consolation goal? Oh, take the strike on from range and it's deflected behind for a corner. Much to the surprise of well, Sunderland at least. However, the rest of her teammates don't appear to be too aggrieved with that decision. The scoreboard could also have something to do with that. The 
Ball is lofted up towards the back post and can only find the head of Munoz Bravo. Behind it goes for another corner. Next week for Brisbane City, they're heading down the coast to take on Rabina. They're actually on the road the next two weeks. Well, the next two FQPL games, 3rd of June. Heading up the range to take on Southwest Queensland Thunder. Who are heading into today. They were five points clear of the top the FQPL one ladder. And here goes City on the break. It's four on three, and the pass is just almost enough to tee up the players, but that was a ball and all challenge. I'll emphasize the and all. Pressure there to see the ball over the sideline. 30 seconds of normal time remaining. Broadbeach next weekend. They're at home on Saturday taking on Logan Lightning. And then after the weekend off, they're at home again to play Pride. It's Doyle. Ball back as Keane is dispossessed in the middle of the park and Kramer thought about it but didn't quite get there. With Charleston cutting inside. Nelik. And that was just on the wrong foot for her as left footed effort once again rolls harmlessly wide and Sunderland will take her time. She will eschew the short option, tell everyone, let's just go long, clear it away. Full time, Brisbane City extend their unbeaten start through the season with a comfortable, in the end, 6-2 win over Broadbeach United. 2-1 after 45 minutes. Broadbeach found an equaliser early in the second half. However, three goals in the final, or four goals to be part of the final 25 minutes is enough to give the home side all three points. Thank you very much for your company for this women's football feature match. City and Royal Beach United. I'm James Coglin. Stay tuned on FQTV for a whole lot more action coming your way. We'll see you later.